Hey guys, it's Julia. Welcome back to my channel. So today's video is going to be something I've been super, super excited to review for you guys. As I said at the beginning of this month, I do have quite a few like full review videos like this one and I go in <laughs> for my full review videos. I'm a pretty picky person. <laughs> I also just like to be very thorough and give you guys every single aspect of a product. So today I am super excited to be reviewing for you guys the new Huda Beauty New Nudes Palette. I was so excited for this palette when I saw the promo pictures released. Um, I know that some people kind of had mixed feelings. Some people were like, oh, it's another neutral palette. Boring. And I love color. I love color. Just a quick scroll through my Instagram page will show you that I pretty much do colorful eye looks very often. But on a daily basis, I do like going for a bit of a softer look, usually with neutral colors. Um, that's just what I wear to class, what I wear to work. So I saw this palette as something that was going to be really practical for me in both like my everyday life and as well as being able to do some really, really amazing dramatic looks because I mean, look at the shimmer shades in here. This palette is $65. <laughs> Huda's palettes are definitely a bit more on the expensive side. I really love the graphic design on her palettes. They did a really nice job with the Desert Dusk as well, so you can kind of see a running theme with these palettes, but I feel like this one has even better quality packaging than the last one. When you open it up, you have this little insert here, which is like thick plastic. This must have been very expensive to produce. You also have a nice big mirror as well, but then here are the colors. Holy shit. <laughs> and whenever I'm doing a palette review like this one, like the Norvina palette review or the Jaclyn Hill vault collection, my favorite thing to do first is to break down the color story. By the way, in this video, I will have timestamps for every single thing. So I'll have a timestamp in the description box. You can kind of skip around to each part of the video that you wanna see. In here, you are getting 10 mattes, five standard shimmer shades, four of which are the like really insanely textured, crazy, like foiled ones and then one standard. Uh, you get two pressed glitters and then one cream kind of concealer shade. I kind of see three different diverging color stories in here. The bottom row in itself is kind of just your basic, very soft neutral shades. You're getting some kind of like cooler berry tones and mauve tones in here. So I feel like half of the palette is comprised of something that was gonna be really practical for me in both like my everyday life and as well as being able to do some really, really amazing dramatic looks because I mean, look at the shimmer shades in here. This palette is $65. <laughs> Huda's palettes are definitely a bit more on the expensive side. I really love the graphic design on her palettes. They did a really nice job with the Desert Dusk as well, so you can kind of see a running theme with these palettes, but I feel like this one has even better quality packaging than the last one. When you open it up, you have this little insert here, which is like thick plastic. This must have been very expensive to produce. You also have a nice big mirror as well, but then here are the colors. Holy shit. <laughs> and whenever I'm doing a palette review like this one, like the Norvina palette review or the Jaclyn Hill vault collection, my favorite thing to do first is to break down the color story. By the way, in this video, I will have timestamps for every single thing. So I'll have a timestamp in the description box. You can kind of skip around to each part of the video that you wanna see. In here, you are getting 10 mattes, five standard shimmer shades, four of which are the like really insanely textured, crazy, like foiled ones and then one standard. Uh, you get two pressed glitters and then one cream kind of concealer shade. I kind of see three different diverging color stories in here. The bottom row in itself is kind of just your basic, very soft neutral shades. You're getting some kind of like cooler berry tones and mauve tones in here. So I feel like half of the palette is comprised of like cooler tone berries, mauves, and pinks. And then the other half is composed of really nice light neutral shades. So this is definitely a lot less warm tone than the Desert Dusk palette. And I feel like this is a really interesting take on a neutral palette I haven't really seen anything like this one so I think that's probably why they call it the new nude palette because I guess like purples and pinks are the new nude. Now I'm gonna go ahead and show you guys swatches and then we'll get right into the overall formula talk so I'll do a shade by shade breakdown of every single formula and shade in the palette. So swatches next meme slash overtly sexual undertones so you have like kinky raw love bite spanked I'm cool with that. I don't really mind the more mature theme, but like I wouldn't feel comfortable whipping out this palette in front of my mother. I can't speak for her Rose Gold Remastered palette or her Rose Gold Original, but I've tried the um, Desert Dust palette and then I also have tried some of her Obsessions palettes. I feel like the matte formula is really consistent. Her mattes can err on the side of being a little bit drier than um, like Anastasia or something a bit creamier. So they're a bit of a drier texture. They don't have a ton of fallout to them, but they blend so, so easily. These are one of the most easy to blend matte shadows I've ever tried. And they also have a really nice amount of pigmentation to them. So I feel like they're very easy 
to kind of layer on and you don't kind of get that muddy blend, you don't lose the color. They're also pretty user friendly. I would say the Anastasia formula can be a little bit hard to use if you're a beginner, but these are really, really easy. They're not super hard to blend out. They're just, they're really nice to work with. So I really do like the matte formula a lot. If I could give a complaint, it would be that there's not a lot of like deepening shades in here. There's only really one kind of deeper shade, which is Love Bite. In the different looks that I created with this palette, I use this shade very often just because I like having a nice deeper shade. Just because I like having something that's a little bit deeper to kind of add some definition. And there's really only one deeper shade in here. I wouldn't have put like a black in here. That's not what I really mean. I just would have liked to see at least like deeper matte shades. So probably like a nice, I guess like kind of chocolatey burgundy reddish shade that would have been beautiful just to kind of add to kind of the neutral shades in here but you're really only getting the kind of darker matte purple so I would have loved to see one more deepening shade in here but with the rest of the mattes I'm really satisfied I feel like everything performed pretty much the same and it's definitely very hard to formulate purples and I think they did a really awesome job with these and they're not hard to blend at all so I didn't experience any patchiness with these I really enjoyed how they performed and the mattes in here are Awesome. Next, I wanna talk about the formula that kind of grabbed everyone in and got everyone excited about this palette in the first place, which is gonna be the super textured, crazy looking shimmers. When Huda first sneak peeked the palette, you could see these really insane. They looked like foil literal foil. That would be the shades Crave, Fantasy, Daydream, and Charmed. There is also a standard shimmer in here called Kinky, which I use in the I Love tutorial part of this video. They are still definitely very foil shimmer shades, but when the palette arrived, I realized the look that you were seeing of super textured shadows in the promo pictures wasn't necessarily true. Um, there's like literal like white flecks, so I'll show you guys in a close-up of the shades, but there's white um, flecks within. It kind of looks like mold but it's not mold they're kind of like particles of pearl so they kind of give a little bit of brightness to the shimmer shade and a tiny bit of a duochrome flip to them so it's a very unique formula and i definitely really like it i think it's a pretty effect but i guess it is kind of deceiving in terms of how it looks in pictures i definitely think that once you get to the bottom of the pan you don't see as many of those flecks in there i think it was added to the top of the eyeshadow just to kind of give the illusion of having a really nice aesthetic in the picture that being said though i really do enjoy the shimmers in here i think it's a kind of different formula from what's in the desert dusk palette which i'll show you guys right now there's more standard shimmers in here but then you do have two kind of like duochrome super textured ones those ones are beautiful but they're a bit harder to work with these i feel like they perform like regular shimmer shadows they definitely do perform best with your finger i have tried them with a brush and they do perform fine with a brush but i love applying these with a the finger it's just it's beautiful they definitely are very intense though. So if you are planning on getting this one and trying to create super soft glam looks that aren't really dramatic, I don't know if you're gonna like the shimmers in here because if your softer, like more neutral and basic looks include shimmers, you might want something a bit more subtle in terms of shimmer shades. So like the, what the Modern Renaissance palette has are these super like not foiled at all, just kind of satiny shimmer shades. These are beautiful if you're going for a softer glam look. And as a palette that's supposed to be like the nude palette, the neutral palette in your collection, I don't know if people would really enjoy the fact that you don't really get any softer shimmers in here but just in general i think these are really beautiful shades and i really do like the shimmer formula in here it's easy to work with and it's not too high maintenance overall the only thing i'm really missing would be a um like inner corner highlight it's not a huge problem i literally have 200 of those shades within my collection i could just use a highlighter if i wanted to so not a big issue once again there are also two pressed glitters in here these are actually kind of different in formula from the one in the desert dusk palette i felt like that one is a a lot easier to break it's a bit more fragile whereas these seem to be a bit more tightly pressed and a bit more tightly packed so they're not going to break on me as easily i still wouldn't feel safe traveling with this palette just with huda's palettes in general i don't really like traveling with them just because they are a bit more on the fragile side and they are definitely very expensive i know pressed glitter is not necessarily going to be for everyone personally i really enjoy the pressed glitters in here and i did use one of them in the eye look that i show you guys but i really enjoy them i know they're not going to be for everyone and if you don't like pressed glitters you're probably going to hate these two shades so um, that just might be something to take into account because if you're not going to be using two of the shades in here, it's a $65 palette. That could be a pretty big waste. And then finally, I wanted to talk about the shade up here called Concealed, which is a very unique shade in the palette. I wasn't really expecting this, um, but it's basically like a cream concealer shade. So it's meant to be used as an eye base. You can use it as an eyelid primer, um, as a concealer to kind of cut your crease. And I think it's a really unique addition to the palette. However, 
I don't know if this is executed necessarily in the best way. It's right in the open with all the other matte shades in here. So particularly what I find is that whenever I use the shade Lace, inevitably there's gonna be some powder kick up that gets into the shade Concealed. So you might get some things mixed in here and it's a cream formula. So it's obviously gonna have things stick to it, which is annoying and not necessarily the most sanitary or clean thing. So I feel like if you're really messy with your makeup, you might end up with this being a mess. What I really wish they would have done would be to take the shade out, replace it with one other shade, and then separately include like a little pot of eyelid primer. I am so powerful. My mind, oh, it amazes me sometimes. I would definitely pay $65 for the palette and then a separate pot of the um, eyelid primer because it's a really good primer. Um, it's just kind of messy in terms of how it's packaged, but I do really enjoy this one. Half of the looks I did with this palette that I'm gonna show you guys in the video, I used this shade as my eyelid primer, and then the other half I used my regular um, Urban Decay Primer Potion in the shade Fix, just for the sake of being able to test it with both. But yeah, that is my overall formula, shade by shade breakdown. I really enjoy the mattes in here. I feel like they're very easy to work with, and the shimmers, not gonna be for everybody, especially if you do like a softer shimmer shade. These are definitely very high impact and textured, which I adore. I really like the press glitters but they're not going to be for everybody as i said and then the concealer shade i enjoy it just could have been executed better okay so now i wanted to show you guys four official eye looks that i've created with this palette so two of them are kind of very dramatic and you know my regular style of instagram makeup and then two of them are like the softer glam things i'd wear on the daily i wanted to create looks on kind of both ends of the spectrum so those four looks though are not the only ones i've created with this palette i have been playing with this palette for about a week and a half so i've been able to develop full thoughts but the four looks that i'm showing you guys are the only ones that i photographed i've done many more with this palette so the first look i'm going to show you guys is up on my instagram i use these shades tickle and lace in the crease and i use love bite and spanked and then I also used the um, shades Daydream and Fantasy all over the lid. That was a really fun look to create. It was just your basic average cut crease, but I used some of the deeper shades in there. That was the first look, definitely a very dramatic one. And then for that look, I used my eyelid primer, the Urban Decay Primer Potion, and the shade Fix. The second look I created was a bit more on the brown sides. I used the shades Secret, Teddy, and Raw in the crease. And then I used a bit of Love Bite and a tiny bit of Tease as well. And for this one, I did use my Urban Decay Primer Potion in the shade Fix. The next look is another kind of neutral, everyday, super soft glam look. Definitely not something I would post on my Instagram, but it was one of my favorite looks I've created in a long time. So for this one, I used the shade Secret in the crease. I buffed the shade Teddy into the crease as well as my kind of deepening shade. And then I used Raw as a kind of like winged out flush liner. And finally, I did a tiny, tiny layer of Crave and a little bit of Daydream as well all over the lid. And for that day, I also used the shade Concealed as my eyelid primer. I didn't notice any creasing throughout the day. I really liked how everything lasted, and I think this is an awesome primer. And then for today's look, I used the shade Concealed as my primer. I went into the shades Lace, Tease, Love Bite on the crease. Then I used the shades Fantasy, Infatuated, and Kinky on the lid. I also used a tiny bit of the shade Bare as well to kind of set the eyelid primer. But I will show you guys the tutorial of this look right now, so go ahead and see how the shadow performs in real time. All right, guys, so this portion of the video is going to be the tutorial, um, with the palette. So I'm gonna be recreating this look on this eye. It's definitely the most dramatic and I guess like complicated look I've done with the palette so far. So I figured I would do this one on camera just because it's probably gonna be better for ha to have this one as like a step-by-step -step so you can see what I did, whereas the rest of the looks are kind of self-explanatory. To start off the look, I'm gonna take this shade here called Concealed, which is the cream um, concealer base. And I'm just gonna use my finger with this one. That's how I've been using the shade for most of the eye looks I've done using it. Um, so just using this as my eyelid primer, it feels Really, really weird to not be going in with my Urban Decay Primer Potion, but figured I'd use this shade today. Next, I'm gonna grab the shade right above it called Lace, which is a kind of mauve-toned, almost lavender transition shade, and this is going to go right in my crease. I'm using a very fluffy kind of blending brush in an oval shape. This is the AOA Studio E129. I'm just gonna dip in there. As you can see, it's not super powdery or anything. There's just like a decent amount of powder kick up, and I'm just gonna start fluffing that into my crease. I like to start in the inner portion first and then kind of work my way outwards, especially because this is gonna be a bit more of like a winged out look. So I'm just kind of flicking out this mauve shade towards the end of my, the tail of my brow and just kind of flicking it upwards in a winging motion. So that shade lace blended out really nicely. I feel like it just diffused really easily into the crease. So next I wanna go ahead and deepen up the crease. We're gonna go into the shade here called Tease, which is a bit of a like kind of dustier lavender shade. It's a bit more on the purple side than the pink, um, but yeah, it's really pretty. Then I'm going in with a brush that's still pretty fluffy, but it's a bit denser than the last one. This is my AOA Studio E128. Got two dips in here as well. 
and just start fluffing that right below where we placed lace. All right, so here's what we're working with so far. I felt like those two blended together really easily. You can kind of see the distinction between lighter and darker, so I really like that. Now I wanna deepen up the crease. This is gonna be the last shade that we put inside the crease. So I'm gonna go for the shade here called Love Bite, which is the deepest kind of like plummy purple shade, and I'm gonna use a fluffy but denser brush. This is my Glamour Dolls number 10. It's a bit smaller, so it's gonna really focus the color in the crease. So I'm just popping this one in right below where I placed the other two shades and just deepening everything up. All right, now it's time to cut the crease. Obviously you could use the um, concealer like eye base shade in here, but I'm gonna actually just use Tarte Shape Tape, which is what I usually use to cut the crease. And then with this particular cut crease, I kind of just flicked it out towards the outer corner. We're really trying to create a very nice winged effect. So um, yeah, I cut it across the lid and then out towards the tail of the brow. I'm gonna go ahead and go into the shade here called Bear, which is just a basic matte bone shade and just use that to kind of set in the crease. Now, if you want to keep this a fully matte look, this is where you could stop. You could just kind of buff on some colors to the lower lash line, add on some liner or something and then pop on lashes and that would be it. But do you really think I wanna keep this a fully matte look? No. Now we're gonna move on to the lid work. This is gonna look really intricate, but it's actually relatively easy to do. So now I'm gonna move into the shade here called Kinky. Okay. I'm actually just gonna use my finger for this one and I'm just gonna kind of dip my finger in there. Obviously it's pretty pigmented already. Um, and this is one of the few shimmer shades in the palette that's not like a super foiled one. And I'm not taking it all the way up to the top of the cut crease. I'm leaving a little bit of space in there. I wanna move into the shade up here called Fantasy, which is one of the super like crazy foiled shimmer shades. And again, I'm just gonna use my finger. I find that these really do perform best with the finger. I'm just gonna pat that right on top of where we placed Kinky. Now I'm gonna go into the shade here called Love Bite using my um, e.l.f. detail crease brush. And I'm just gonna kind of flick out a nice winged area on the outer edge of the eye. So. Starting right here where the shimmer shade kind of tapers off where we stopped applying it Just gonna kind of add this keeping it pretty low and leaving some like nice negative space on top of it Now it's time to use glitter so I'm gonna go ahead and go in with some glitter glue You definitely do have to use an adhesive for the glitter shades in here because they are they tend to fall out, but I would definitely recommend either going for the Glitter Injections Glitter Glue, or if you wanna go really cheap, the e.l.f. Glitter Glue is awesome. And with the glue, I'm just gonna draw a line on top of the cut crease. Now I'm gonna go into the pressed glitter called Infatuated. There are two glitters in here, except I'm just gonna take my brush, um, just dab it in there. I'm keeping the line a bit thicker towards the front, and then as we move out towards the brow, I'm gonna kind of make it tapered out. All right, so that is it with the glitter. I'll zoom you guys in so you can see what we're working with right now, but I really like how this is turning out. We're just gonna go ahead and do the lower lash line now. All right, so going back into the shade here called Love Bite, which is definitely the most used color in this look, and fluff that onto my lower lash line. I'm gonna go into the shade here called Tease that we used on the crease, and then finally the shade Lace. As our finishing touch, I wanted to add in an inner corner highlight, but um, this palette actually doesn't really have anything I could use for an inner corner highlight. So I'm just gonna go ahead and use my Ofra highlighter in the shade Pillow Talk. Any kind of really icy and blinding highlighter will work as an inner corner for this one. To finish off the look, I'm gonna go ahead and do lashes with my Urban Decay Perversion Mascara. All right, and then the lashes I'm using are the Morphe Premium Lashes and the Style Sophisticated. So that is the completed eye look. I hope you guys enjoyed this little tutorial with the Huda Beauty nude palette. And now let's get right back into 
the review. Definitely my favorite part of pretty much any palette review I've ever done is doing the palette comparisons part. So I like to go through this palette and then find a bunch of palettes in my collection that I can kind of compare it to. So first I wanted to compare it obviously to the other Huda Beauty palette I have, which is the Desert Dusk. Obviously the color stories are not very similar at all. I think this is definitely a lot more warm toned. You are getting quite a few different neutrals in here, but you definitely get a lot more like deeper shades and it's a bit more of a dramatic formula. Huh? If anything, I would say that this formula is a tiny bit drier than the one in the new nude palette, but that's probably just because this is newer and then I've had this one for like over a year. Overall though, I would say if you already have the Desert Dusk and you're like, should I get the new nude palette? Is it anything that's gonna add to my collection? I would say go for it. I think it's a really beautiful color story. You aren't really getting any like overlapping shades in here. So if you already have Desert Dusk, I don't think you would be making a mistake in getting this one. It's not super repetitive in my collection and I think it's definitely something very unique to my collection. I had a lot of requests to compare the Modern Renaissance palette from Anastasia with the new nude palette. So I definitely wanted to do that because they do seem to have fairly similar ideas in terms of the color story. So Modern Renaissance is what I would call kind of a similar idea, but a lot more dramatic in execution and just very different. <laughs> Born Fresco is something that honestly, it looks like it could be out of the nude palette. It's the similar kind of mauve tone neutral shade. You are getting a lot more deeper shades in here, but I think this one is definitely a lot more warm toned. Once again though, if your question is, if I already have Modern Renaissance, do I need the new nude palette? I would say, yeah, they're not really that similar at all. This one is definitely very different and it just brings different things to my collection than this one. Um, and while the idea is kind of similar, I think this one has a very different color story. It's a bit more cooler toned. I also had a lot of requests to compare the shimmer formula, which is basically the Dose of Colors block party shimmer shades to the super foil shades inside the new nude palette. So I do not think they're very similar at all. I feel like these ones have a lot smaller glitter particles in them and they're a bit more of like a wet look on the eyes, whereas these are a bit brighter. But yeah, I don't think the Dose of Colors formula is a dupe for the formula in here at all. Now I want to talk about some potentially more affordable options as dupes for the nude palette. So the first one that I actually talked about in my dupes video that I did fairly recently on my channel was the Beauty Creations Tease Me palette. So very similar idea. It's kind of like rosy toned nudes. However, I don't think it's similar at all in terms of the formula. It's a very similar color story. They're very creamy. They do take a little bit more building. So they're definitely not in the same realm of pigmentation and blendability as these ones. And you're also getting a really pretty like textured shadow in here. This one is very similar to the Huda Beauty formula. So I really like this one a lot. So it's a very similar idea. This is probably the closest thing you could get that would be a comparable dupe. I don't think you could really do a lot of the looks that people have been doing with this one using this palette. So they're similar, but not the same. Wow. I also wanted to talk about the ColourPop She palette from the Femme Rosa collaboration. Again, it is geared towards those pink tones. You're not getting really the neutral shades in here, so you are definitely getting a lot less. I feel like that's what makes this palette so special to me is that I can use it for my super dramatic days as well as my very like soft glam basic days. It's pretty, I would say this one is less of a dupe than the Beauty Creations one, but um, similar idea, not really a dupe, but I still wanted to mention this one because if you were looking for something that's kind of similar with the like pink tones and the purple tones, I think you could really get a fun look out of this one. I've also seen people comparing this palette to the Laura Lee Nudie Patootie palette, so that's actually probably the closest like in terms of color story. I obviously haven't tried that one because I haven't bought anything from Laura Lee. I actually might have bought that palette, but I'm really happy with this one. And I think if you're wanting an alternative to that palette, this could be a expensive, but really good dupe. Is it worth it? I'm gonna say yes. I really do like this palette a lot. So this is Julie approved, if that means anything. Something about this one, when the pictures were first released, I just got really excited. Um, and sometimes it's just harder for me to feel that way about makeup sometimes, especially because this is kind of like a part-time job for me now. I review things and I try out so many things that I don't really get excited as much about makeup anymore, but this really brought me back to that feeling of like, wow, that's beautiful. I'm so excited about that release. I definitely think this is gonna be a new favorite for me. It may make it to the 2018 favorites. Really nice color story, and I think she just had a very clear and concise way of telling a story with this palette. So if there's anything I think Huda Beauty does really well, it's just coming up with awesome color stories. I think she executed this amazingly, and yeah, I think it's worth it. It's definitely very expensive. $65 is a crap ton. I also regrettably do not think it's gonna be the best palette for people who are of a darker complexion, which really sucks. With most of the top two rows, I think you'd probably be fine. Um, this you could kind of use as like a setting powder for all over your lid. Lace probably wouldn't really show up that well, or if it did, it would probably be ashy. So that's a concern I have with the shades in here. It might be 
like not the best for people of a darker complexion. It's not the most inclusive palette, I guess, but again, I'm not completely sure about that just because I'm me. If you like this video, please give it a thumbs up. Make sure you subscribe down below and also make sure you're following me on Instagram to see makeup looks like this one, posted pretty much every single day. Um, stay tuned because I will be doing a very similar review to this one on the new James Charles and Morphe palettes. God is a woman. God. But until then, I hope you guys enjoyed this one and if you made it to the very end of this video, I love you a frick ton. Thank you guys so much for watching this channel. Bye.